Hello, my name is Jill Graham and I am the Acting Chief Risk Officer here at CNCS. It's great to be here today. For those of you who don't know me, I have a background in AmeriCorps, having served as an AmeriCorps member and run an AmeriCorps program. And I worked for AmeriCorps State and National here at CNCS before coming over to the Office of the Chief Risk Officer a little more than two years ago. Where the work of our office primarily intersects with yours is in National Service Criminal History Checks, or NSCHC, and the Improper Payments Recovery and Recovery Improvement Acts, or IPIRA. I'm here today to talk a little bit about each of those programs. I will start with IPIRA. The agency is required to assess programs and dollars for improper payment risk, measure the accuracy of payments, and initiate program improvements to ensure payment errors are reduced. To meet our requirements, we test four CNCS programs annually, including AmeriCorps State and National. Many of you are familiar with our testing. We perform data collection and testing in two rounds, drilling down to the transaction level. Our results are then extrapolated into an improper payment rate by a team of external statisticians. This year, the team is testing 354 FFRs, which will be about 1,400 individual transactions. At this time, data collection and testing are ongoing. We will be continuing to request additional documentation from selected grant recipients over the next couple of months. We are aware that many programs have been affected by COVID-19 and we are being sensitive to that in our requests. Despite challenges presented by the pandemic, many of you have prioritized getting IPR responses back to us and we are really grateful for this level of response. I ask you to please continue to be as responsive as you can be as we drive the process to a close. We know you've all worked extremely hard to ensure payment accuracy and to address NSCHC non-compliance, which has been the primary driver of the agency's improper payment rate in previous years. We are expecting to see improvements in the rate this year, and we want to make sure that we are fully incorporating all results into the rate to demonstrate this improvement. Now moving on to National Service Criminal History Checks, or NSCHC. I know you all take very seriously the safeguarding of vulnerable populations and work hard every day to ensure compliance with a myriad of national service requirements, including NSCHC. I'd like to take a few minutes to provide a brief background on how we came to our current approach to NSCHC. In her April 2018 testimony to the Congressional Committee on Education and the Workforce, CNCS CEO Barbara Stewart identified NSCHC as an area of compliance that is of utmost importance, particularly ensuring programs and grantees fully comply with the statutory requirements related to NSCHC. Demonstrating the agency's commitment to ensuring that grant recipients meet the requirements of NSCHC, in November 2018, the CEO shared the availability of new tools and policies to support the agency's NSCHC program. These were designed to safeguard vulnerable populations throughout the communities we serve by eliminating barriers to compliance with NSCHC, reducing NSCHC non-compliance, and reducing the monitoring burden on grantees and CNCS. In support of these goals, CNCS identified a vendor to support the agency's existing FBI channel or contract to provide grantees with compliant access to all three components of NSCHC. So we now have TrueScreen and FieldPrint. We established an exemption period to allow for NSCHC rechecks, we provided funding to support rechecks of individuals working or serving in covered positions, and we implemented new practice for NSCHC enforcement at the conclusion of the exemption period. These strategies have resulted in significant improvement to NSCHC compliance, as reported in the agency's 2019 Annual Manager Report. As I mentioned earlier, NSCHC non-compliance is the primary driver of the agency's improper payment rate. A preliminary analysis of the FY19 IPRA test transactions show that the use of the vendor by CNCS grantees resolved the NSCHC component of the improper payment transactions in 88% of the transactions for which the NSCHC component rendered the payment improper. With regard to the NSCHC vendors, TrueScan and FieldPrint, the agency continues to strongly encourage grant recipients to use these vendors. These vendor systems simplify access to NSCHC and, as noted above, dramatically improve compliance. We also take seriously making sure these vendor systems work for you, and we continue to make improvements to the vendor systems in response to grant recipient feedback. These include that FieldPrint now indicates on its website which live scan locations are accessible to people with disabilities. And for TrueScreen, the notification email that TrueScreen sends to alert grantees that checks are back for review now directs grantees to adjudicate their check in the system. We add a double name verification to reduce spelling errors in the name search and we built and continue to enhance the monitoring report to improve utility. If there are other ways the vendor systems can be more useful for you, please let us know. There are some things we may be able to do and may not be able to do, but we welcome the feedback and we will do what we can. One other thing I'd like to touch on today is NSCHC Alternative Search Procedures, or ASPs. 
and AST is a flexibility the agency can provide to grant recipients unable to obtain full and complete NSCHC. The agency had long been granting ASTs in acknowledgement of the difficulty of obtaining full and complete NSCHC. In the fall of 2018, CNCS provided notice to grant recipients that most ASPs would phase out or expire as of December 31st, 2019. The intent of this was to streamline requirements and streamline documentation, particularly since the NSCHC vendors resolved many of the common issues grant recipients faced in attempting to obtain full and complete NSCHC from other sources. This past spring, we began to hear from some grant recipients that additional flexibilities with NSCHC may be needed in response to COVID-19, particularly around fingerprinting. In an effort to both protect and safeguard populations intended for protection by NSCHC requirements and meet the potential need to consider some flexibility in the current COVID-19 environment, we developed a streamlined, time-bound ASP process specific to COVID-19. These ASPs were originally set to expire on August 31st. We recently announced that they have been extended until November 29th as a result of ongoing challenges obtaining full and complete NSCHC, particularly the fingerprinting component, as a result of COVID-19. We will continue to monitor the impact of COVID on NSCHC in the coming months to determine next steps. And finally, I just want to offer all of you a thank you. While I know that much of the work our unit does with you all is focused on complex and sometimes overwhelming requirements, we see how hard you all work each day to keep national service moving forward, to be responsive, and to maintain compliance with requirements. I know this past year has been an immense challenge on many levels, and every day you are all working to make sure that national service continues to meet the changing needs of communities in the face of these challenges. Thank you for all the work you are all doing.